Now, in that document, we have Dr. MacArthur talking to these congressmen in secret. And the only way the document came up was under Freedom of Information, so I'll show you. Now, what did he tell them in secret in 1969, asking for money for 1970? He was saying, next year we want this amount of money. And here's what we're going to do. Now, what did he say he was going to do? Well, one thing he said they wanted to do, if they could get the money, was invent a new disease. No, no, not, not one of the existing diseases, like uh, measles or something, but a new disease caused by a new microorganism. Over the next five to ten years, okay, 1970, Sometime between 1975 and 1980, it would be possible to produce a synthetic biological agent. Now, what is a synthetic biological agent? Well, as he says, it is an agent that does not naturally exist. And on the cover of our brucellosis triangle, we have what happens. You have a bacteria such as the brucellosis bacteria, and then you introduce enough of them to enough of the Vista virus that causes <coughs> mad cow disease, and the virus lands on the bacteria, and they put down the little holes, and they drain their DNA into the bacteria, and lo and behold, a new kind of bacteria is born, combining the old bacteria like brucellosis which gave you heart trouble, and stomach trouble, and lung trouble, and bone trouble, and brain trouble. They combine that with the disease from mad cow disease, which gives you severe neurological damage. Damage to your short-term memory, damage to your emotional ability, and so on. But he was talking about something else as well. Within five to ten years, we can have a new biological agent, an agent that does not naturally exist and for which, now look at this statement, no natural immunity could have been acquired. Now for most diseases in the world, our species of human beings have acquired a capacity to deal with most bacteria and viruses. Basically, we have. However, if you get a brand new one, then there's nothing in the body that will fight it, because it's never met it before. Now take a look at that sentence again. No natural immunity could have been acquired. Now if you have no money, you have a deficiency of money. And if you take a look at that expression and reword it slightly, and I'll tell you why you have to reword it, you have acquired immune deficiency, AIDS. Plain and simply, AIDS were invented at Camp Epic, Maryland, by the Pentagon to be used in Africa to reduce the population of certain countries where the population was growing too fast. And this is evident because in 1976, the American government voted several million dollars to send several groups of people from NIH over to Africa and to travel through Africa giving any black citizen of Africa. They weren't to do it for whites. They were to do it for the black citizens of Africa. They were to give those people a free vaccination against smallpox. Now, if you come to a village that's got a chief there, and you offer him a nice gift, a transistor radio or something, and he said, oh, that's very nice. We, are, we always want a transistor radio. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, look, we've got some smallpox vaccine. And you know, every now and again, somebody gets sick with smallpox. Oh, yeah, right. Three years ago, we had a person get sick with smallpox. Well, line them all up. We'll give them a free shot of vaccine against smallpox, and then we'll give you this transistor radio, and we'll go on our way. So, in all kinds of countries, Kenya, the Congo, Zimbabwe, uh, Rwanda, Rwanda, or whatever, uh, Burundi, millions 
of people lined up and got a free vaccination against smallpox. And five years later, 60% of them had AIDS. And now you see, in Africa, there are 20 million people sick with AIDS, and the population is going down, 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 so that threat is being eliminated. That is one thing that the Pentagon was working on and wanted money for, and they were given the money. In 1970, they started a program called MK Ultra, where they set out to do thing that the Pentagon was working on and wanted money for, and they were given the money. In 1970, they started a program called MK Ultra, where they set out to develop AIDS to kill people. And you can read the rest of this, you know, it, it, it tells. How would it work? Well, it would differ in certain important aspects from any known disease caused in organism. Most important of these is that it might be refractory to the immunological and therapeutic processes that we depend upon to keep us healthy. In other words, the immune system couldn't fight. And that's just what AIDS is. And there's all kinds of evidence. However, of more interest to many of you is the other thing they were looking for. They were not only looking to kill some people, they wanted to kill off a whole bunch of people in Africa and India and so on. Fine, we will invent this new agent. Now they already knew they could do it. But they were only telling the congressmen they needed the money to do it because they wanted to get the money. But they were also working on something else. We are seeking to develop new incapacitants. Now what are these incapacitants? Well, the rest of the document tells you what it is. They were trying to develop incapacitants to use in certain uh, Western capitalist countries where they didn't want to kill the people. I mean, they're not total beasts. They just wanted to disable them. Because they knew that if you're sufficiently disabled, your marriage is apt to break up. You're not apt to have as many children as you might have had. You, uh, there are other things will happen to you. And they set out to develop incapacitants, things that would make the person unable to do a full day's work. And those incapacitants were to be biological weapons of one kind. Biological weapons, both lethal, AIDS, and incapacitants, CFIS, chronic fatigue syndrome. And then the chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, the agent that they started with was brucellosis. They took it, they crossed it with the bees, the virus, and they made a new disease agent. Well, how do we know this? Now bear in mind that all these documents I'm showing you are either government documents or for the best medical journals you can get. How do we know that they were successful? Well, there was a senator a few years ago, uh, the Senator Donald Regal, I think it was Michigan, and he was the chairman of the uh, banking committee, very strange committee, but he was very concerned about the number of people who came back from the Gulf War who were ill. And so he used his power as chairman of the banking committee and he said to the Pentagon and to the American Type Culture Collection in Rockview, Maryland, I want you to tell me how many biological weapons components the United States shipped to Saddam Hussein in Iraq <coughs> between 1982 and 1989. And the uh, Senate committee backed him up, and they told the Pentagon, okay boys, tell us what you ship Iraq. So what did they ship Iraq? I've got about 50 pages from the Regal Report, and a whole bunch of biological weapons were sent to Iraq. Now why did they want Iraq to have it? Well, Iraq was at war with Iran, and the Americans wanted the Iranian oil. So they thought if they helped Iraq beat Iran, then they could have easier access to Iran. So they shipped Saddam Hussein 
a number of things. Now here's just one page of what they shipped them. But look at what they shipped them, among other things. 